Hi there everybody, hope all is well. Today we're having a look at the Panasonic S5 Mark II and the video settings that I use while shooting on this camera. Of course, I will be uploading my settings so you can use them on your camera as well, but I would recommend that you watch the whole video so you know where all the settings are if you eventually would love to change them for your own sake. So before we go into the menus, there are some things to know about this camera. Uh, one thing that's very important and the thing that I change quite often is how and which buttons I use for, as custom buttons. Now this is very easy on Panasonic cameras. You only hold the button that you want to change for two seconds and then you get, get into the menu and there you can actually change what each custom button can do. So going into the menus through the menu button, you get into exposure and I mostly shoot in manual mode when shooting video with basically any camera. Now there are situations where you probably would love to go more like the automatic road. If you are vlogging and you have a change of weather all the time and the sun goes in and out through clouds, then you might go to something like shutter speed. But for me personally, I always shoot in manual mode. Now my photo style of choice is going to be vlog and I have used vlog for a couple of years now and I really love that logarithmic style of shooting. However, with the Panasonic S5 Mark II, you can actually go to something called real-time LUT and this is such a beautiful thing. Real-time LUT basically lets you burn in the LUT that you have into the footage. This means that you can shoot both photos and video and send it directly to your phone or tablet and use it for social media very quick. This also means that you can go into Photoshop or DaVinci Resolve and make your own LUT so you have your own special looks and they will get burned in to both your videos but also your JPEGs. And for me, this is actually a feature that I'm probably going to use more than I had thought about from the beginning. But for fast turnarounds, like social media posts, this is actually a game changer. So another feature that's really important to at least understand, and this is only a feature that I only use when I have to, that's synchro scan. So sometimes when you're shooting video, and a lot of the time it could turn, turn up in slow motion, you get like flickering in your image, then it's really good to use the synchro scan feature, and this will let you change shutter angle increments by one, which will let you get that sh shutter angle where you don't have any flicker anymore. But as I said, this doesn't happen too often, so it's good to know that it is there if you need to. Now, the, one of the first things that I actually do change on the Panasonic camera is that I change the SS slash gain operation. I want to use angle slash ISO instead of seconds and ISO. And this is because when you know that you have a 180 degree angle, you always know that your motion blur will be perfect, so you don't have to think too much about shutter speed. I really wish more cameras had shutter angle like the Panasonic cameras do. Like here, I'm shooting with the Sony a7S III, a very expensive camera, but it doesn't have this feature. Now going further, I always to tend to shoot in .mov, however if you're shooting on a PC it could be a good choice to actually shoot in MP4s, but for me personally I use a Mac so for me I always shoot in .mov and I know that there are cameras where you won't get all the different codecs in MP4 so sometimes you actually need to shoot in .mov, however the video quality won't be changed depending on what setting you use here. Now the recording quality will of course be very subjective, I have the camera uh, right now in 6k in open gate and what open gate means is that it will record the whole 3x2 full frame sensor and for me this is actually a no-brainer because this will let you have more leeway in post now with that said I do use other uh, recording quality settings as a 4k422 which is a very beautiful and downsampled codec however I do save those in the custom menu and I will show that later in the video A thing that I really love having enabled on all of my cameras, if they do have it, is focus peaking. And the same here on Panasonic camera. As you can see here, I use focus peaking. And you also have the ability to choose which amount of focus peaking sensitivity you would like to use. And you can also choose which color 
you want to see. I found that either white or red is easiest to see while monitoring. When shooting video, audio is going to be very important and it's really important to actually see what you're recording. So having your sound recording level displays on is also really important. And here you can actually see the displays showing how the levels are right now. So looking more at sound is going to be the sound recording level adjustment. And, and most of the time, because the cameras, uh, audio preamps tend to many times be very noisy. I like to have my levels as low as I can. And then on the Panasonic S5 Mark II, you can actually go down to minus 18 dB before you go to mute. So this is where I like to have. But this will also depend a lot on which type of microphone you're using with this camera, such as the Rode Video NTG, where you can actually change the gain. There, I would recommend that you have a higher gain on your microphone and a lower gain on the camera. However, there are microphones that don't have any gain control. And there, I actually would rather raise the gain level to a little bit higher and have it noisier than to do it always in post. And this is actually a thing that I do quite often. So I like to have one of the custom buttons to very fast go in and change the gain. On the S5 II, I have the down button. And when I press the down button on the D-pad, you can see that I get into the sound recording level adjustment directly. Another thing that's important to know about the Panasonic S5 Mark II is going to be how the image stabilization actually works. And going in here, I have the normal in-body stab stabilization activated. However, you can also activate the e-stabilization, which is a digital crop and works actually quite fine. I don't like to use that because I really feel that this camera has such good, good stabilization. However, something that I tend to use is the Boost IS. And Boost IS is actually a fantastic feature that you can find on some Panasonic cameras with really good IBIS. And what it lets you do is to hold your camera still without the tripod and you will get tripod looking shots. So don't move while using this feature and it will look really great. And Boost IS is also one of those features that I have assigned to a custom button. Earlier in this video, I was talking about having LUTs in your camera that you can use to burn in both JPEGs and also video. And you do that in the image quality part of your menus. You have to go to LUT library and here is where you actually can put in your own LUTs. Now, because I don't have this camera for too long of a time, I've only used the nicest LUT that Panasonic makes. But when I get this camera for my own, I will be doing my own LUTs in DaVinci so I can get that look that I really want. So another thing that I also want like to change in the menus is going to be that I want to use both autofocus and manual focus at the same time whenever I want to. This means that if I am using manual focus, it will override the autofocus. And this is also a feature that you have to turn on in the camera. Also, when you get your camera in the beginning, you won't be able to use the shutter button to record video. And this is something I also turn on as fast as I can because I almost always use the shutter button instead of the recording button. I would almost prefer to that Panasonic made the shutter button red instead of the recording button uh, because I never use that for recording at all. So in the monitor settings, there is a feature called Vlog View Assist. And this is something that I use because I find it so dull looking at the Vlog image while shooting. So here, I like to go into the LUT View Assist for the monitor and put it on. And this will let us use the LUT of our choice while recording video so we can see how it will look after that you've graded. Another thing that I really love with this camera also is something called frame marker. And if we go in and look at what it does, it will have you let you have frame markers depending on which type of aspect ratio you will deliver so you know so you basically know what frame you will get. However, it won't crop in that frame while shooting. It will only let you display that. So if you're doing something like 
doing a video for either TikTok or Instagram Reels, you can actually choose 9x16 and put it on. And when you will record, you will see a 9x16 frame marker that will let you know what you're actually recording and so that the framing will be correct. You also have the ability to use Seabrush and something that's really lovely with Panasonic cameras is that you can actually have two points of Seabrush and this is so wonderful. You, you can see that we have Seabrush 1 and Seabrush 2 and you can also have Seabrush 1 plus 2 and here you can actually set them on. This means is that the camera will actually tell you when you're clipping and here I would recommend to have one type of zebra set to 95% or maybe even 99% and the other ones to 70%. Many times would want to have the skin tones when exposuring. So this is such a killer feature and it's actually a pro feature that you can find in this camera. So the zebra pattern is also a feature that I actually would put on one of the custom buttons so you can actually find it very fast. Waveforms and vector scopes are also the same. You can actually use, choose which one you would like to have. And this is also a thing that I have put on, on a custom button so I can see my waveform very fast if I don't want to use them. One of my favorite features that I use quite a lot is the red recording frame indicator. And what this lets us do is that while recording, it will have a red box throughout the monitor so you know that you're actually recording. And before with Panasonic cameras, this was actually a big thing that you weren't always aware of when you were recording. Because if you look at the small dot in the left corner, sometimes it's very hard to see. So if you're using this big outline, you will be sure that you're actually recording. And I'm right now recording on the Panasonic S1H and I'm really sure that it's getting everything that I want. So another thing that I feel it's really important to actually change on this camera is gonna be the folder and file settings. So when you go into the folder and file settings, you can go in and you can actually name what the, the folder name is supposed to be. However, my favorite thing here is to go into the file limit settings uh, and change. So you'd have P underline and AB. AB stands for Arbor Bakai. And this is so important because then I know that this is these are the files that I shot from my camera when I look at them on the computer if I'm shooting with anybody else. Another thing that I feel is really important is the monitor backlight setting. And on the newest cameras that Panasonic have made, you can actually put this to plus three, which will let you see the monitor in broad daylight. And I feel that this is such a killer feature and I, I hope that a lot of other manufacturers would let you do this. But the difference between zero and plus three is such big, is so big. However, you have to know that it will, of course, drain your battery a little bit more. Now one of my favorite features on Panasonic cameras is gonna be how you can save your custom modes. And this is really cool. And you can see now that on C1, you can see C1 is, is on top over here. You can see that I have written 6K 3x2. This means that I'm recording in the 6K in open gate. C2 right now is at 4K 4 to 2. And you can also see that C3.1 or line one is 1080p 100 frames per second. And you can also see that three C3 2 is going to be 4K at 50p. And you can also go in and customize up to 10 different settings. And this is also really cool because you can have your own settings for TikTok or Instagram. And you can also have your own, own specific settings if you have your own LUT. So this means that you can go into your camera, just load that settings and you know that everything is going to be perfect from the get-go. However, from the beginning you only have three additional custom settings here. You can see that I have 10. And if you want to have those 10 settings, you have to go into custom mode settings, go in there and choose 10. And that's the most. Something that's really nice with the latest Panasonic cameras is also that you can edit the titles. And this is something that I definitely would do if I was you, because if you don't use your camera every, every single day, you might forget the settings and you can change the different names for the settings so that you know every time which settings you're gonna cho shoot from. Ba, 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 ba. 
Now also, also on Panasonic cameras, you do have something called My Menu. And this is three pages that you can populate with different menu items that you have in the menus you would like to find really fast. However, I feel that Panasonic menus are quite easy to to look around in. And the menu items that I really need to change very fast, I tend to use custom buttons to change those very fast. So here, if I press up, I have my monitoring lots or video assist lot. Pressing right, you can see that I have my waveform. And pressing down, I have my audio levels. So I tend to not use my menu in the menu system. So guys, thank you for watching this video. And if you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel with more videos and tests on the Panasonic S5 Mark II. Until the next time, see you soon and bye bye.